All right, peeps, here's the deal. Today is a unique day. I'm trying something different. I am going to share with you how I edit a vlog style video for whatever I'm working on, whether it's Vlogtober and I've got to edit through things quickly. I'm going to give you my thought processes, how I edit, what I use, and I'm going to try to do it in a short amount of time. I don't know how much time, but we're going to try to keep this short. So time for a peek behind the curtain, how I edit, what I use, why I do what I do. And three, two, one, let's get to it. All right, so I don't know if I'm doing this right. I am actually recording myself as I do a screen recording and I'm going to walk you through exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So let's just dive in real quick. I use Final Cut Pro, I am an Apple user, so therefore if you don't know how to use Final Cut Pro, you're gonna watch a lot of YouTube videos to get caught up because that's exactly what I did and I think anyone can do this. So we're gonna dive right in real quick. I'm gonna show you a wood rot video that I'm doing for my brand, KC Lifestyle, which is a real estate company here that I'm working with. I'm a realtor in Kansas City. I also do videos for other brands as well in different unique things. So let's just dive into how I am doing my Vlogtobers, how I'm doing my brands. Here we go. Final Cut Pro, and as you can see, I just started a simple um, file right here, and it's gonna say uh, wood rot wood video, and I have not started my project. I'm just gonna go up here and hit new, I'm gonna hit project. I shoot everything in an SN60P on my Canon M50, and then I actually edit in 24P. This is what I do, um, wood rot. Just throw that in there real quick. I'm gonna keep this super short, and uh, as far as the files go, I have them on my desktop, and I just will pull them over, wood rot. So, everything pops right into my files, as you can see. And this is me talking about, in essence, uh, I used to be a wood rot and painting contractor for a number of years, and there was a, a project that was going on, and I wanted to show how I can do wood rot repair as a real estate agent and how I set myself apart from other real estate agents, but I digress. So everything in this file, as you can see, I shot on two different formats. I shot part of the footage on my cell phone because I didn't have a camera with me, and part of it is actually on my Canon M50. So the first thing I do is, is I, in essence, pull everything over into the file, and um, I have them listed by dates. Also, what I've done is, is I've eliminated enough time. The number one thing that you wanna do before you really get started, and this is what I do every time, it drives my wife crazy, I go to a website called Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is where you can do licensing for music. The one thing that you have to find and take the time to do is find the appropriate songs. So Epidemic Sound is just something I've been using for over a year now. I actually love it. Um, it's just, I, I don't know, It's just, when you don't have to sit and worry about where the music's coming from or how it's gonna work or you know if you're gonna like it, it, it just takes a load off. So when you first log in, it's gonna see staff picks. If you look at staff picks, it's gonna look down. You can click on different music. Find the vibes that you want. They actually have sound effects and everything like that. I believe I might have a promo link and I'll try to put that in the description that you can get a 30 day free promo. So take a look at that when you get an opportunity. Here's where we're at. I choose some songs, I download them. And so I've already taken the liberty to download those songs and I added them to the file. And so when you look on my file, uh, you'll look down and I have my different footages that I did from when I was shooting. Uh, this is where termites actually got into a property, depending on the feel you want for your video. So, I actually like to feel the music as I go through. So what I generally do is I've already shot all the footage, I've already kind of built the story in my head. I'll generally pull in just a blank shot in the very beginning. And so in this instance, um, I'll look for a shot where it shows his business, which is my son-in-law's business called Rot Stoppers here in Kansas City. He actually, I helped him create this company a while back. 
turn that sound off. I'll steady the shot. I'll pull it in. It looks good enough. So I'm not going to get super technical here because it is kind of a tutorial on how I come up with the story. So I'll just drag it down. Uh, generally, I'll turn off the, if I'm going to do my, my opening shots to music, I'll just set it to video only. I'll look for my B-footed shots that I want to use. Generally, I'll do something like within the trees or I'll do a foreground shot like this shot right here actually was just me swooping in um, above the sprayer as he walked in carrying a ladder. So it's kind of telling the story of like where is Todd at and why is he showing this guy carrying a ladder. I'll throw that in there and then I'll come up and I'll look for the other shots that I took. Here's a shot with a plant. I did a shot behind some tree. There we go. So I like to use shrubbery or something in the close up scenario so it will focus in on what I'm showing. It just, I think it gives a kind of a cool cinematic effect. I don't necessarily want a lot to go on with it. So just a quick reveal. Again, I'm, sh I'm doing this super fast, folks. Here's our established shots. I already kind of had a feel. I was like, man, I really kind of like that song. So I'm gonna go back to this song. And I've got a couple of them. So this song you can hear kind of would give me a good switch in between camera angles. You got a nice hard pronounce. Gotta feel it, right? So I'm gonna drag that down. It's a little bit better, I think, to use. I'll extend this out. And so I can see the peaks. It's got a little dramatic feel to it. So I will use those peaks and I'll drag them around. So I'll try to match up the peaks on the uh, spot where they are in the songs. So I'll drag things around, give like two to three seconds of reveal time. the way that feels. Okay, so then I'm going to come back and I'll do this as I build up. I actually did a speaking component as an intro, so I always try to do an intro into whatever video I'm doing. I don't care if it's talking to a homeowner, if it's um, out there doing branding or marketing for another business or branding and marketing myself. Usually a few clips to set up where the parameters of where I'm doing the video. The second part of this video is actually going to be set with um, me speaking. Now, I'm just gonna set this up like super quick. I'm not gonna do the whole video, but I will, let me see where I can find this footage of me talking real quick. I'll scrub through. Oh, man. This is what I shot today as the outro. Mm -hmm. Here it is. This was actually, this first shot was done on my cell phone. The reason I wanted to use this is I wanted to share with you how you can link in cell phone footage to actually use any Canon M50 or, or another type footage. So here we are. So this is cell phone footage. I'm gonna just kind of tee it up, bring it down. Oop, sorry about that. I forgot to turn on the um, sound. So I'll drag it back down in the footage. Today, I'm going to... I've already squirt, come out with, I, I'll throw in a transition here. Today. And I kind of like those Transitions that blend kind of an RGB split and if you don't know what that is you can look them up to look for different transitions I don't have time to explain everything to you. I just have some of these saved I'll transition down in my volume Today I'm donning this wonderful attire that Tyler my son-in-law has allowed me to uh... I'll ramp up the sound as needed so I don't peak too much Bring back out that is here. Introductions to the players in the story. I call them players in the story because we are in the story together. So you have Eric, you have myself, you have that Tyler. That is Eric. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so no matter who I'm interviewing, I'm throwing them into the story as well. So they are casting into the story and you're giving a foreground of who they are. Then you're going to <laughs> share with what the problem of the story is. We are not live. So I'm going to edit out some of this. The laughter. 
He says, are we live? I'm going to cut this down a little bit. <laughs> we are not live, but today we're going to be one. So now here I go. I'm going to set up the story. There's Tyler. Wonderful, doing a wonderful project. This project happens to be termites. And so a lot of people don't. So I'm going to edit out the and so. Um, I think here's the problem is, is a lot of us, including myself, we don't always know what to say. So subconsciously we're saying and, and so, how do you, you know, so I edit those I out. I know this in my previous life before real estate, I did contractor work. I am a class A licensed contractor in Johnson County. And this used to be my life for 18 years. So telling the background, the history, now we're going to go through, I'm not going to take the time to go through all the edit. I am just going to share with you so, really the bad. story. We have to rebuild complete walls. So today, I'm not doing real estate. I'm helping my son-in-law in his wood rot business fix a problem. So we're going to fix a problem. And I'm a qualified professional. I've done this for 20 years, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to share with that in that story. So from this point, I will say, let's get to it. You just never know. Let's see, we'll see before and after. So we're gonna see before and after. Then from here, I simply will drag in some more B footage. Okay, I'm not gonna go through this whole thing. Let me just throw in a couple B footage things. And then I'm gonna show you how I do, I'm gonna show you how bad this job is, how horrible it is. I'm gonna turn off the, um, I'm gonna turn up the music. So music's coming in, it's sharing the scenario played out. I'll ramp up the music a little bit. I'll stick a transition in there from me talking to the B footage. Again, I have some of these saved on here. I'm just gonna use some generic ones. So you're gonna see me breaking. So I'm breaking it apart. Here's the thing, that's that clip is like eight seconds. Honestly, most people are not gonna watch that long. It's gonna get too boring. They're gonna wanna see three to four seconds of what you're doing. I'll do a couple clips of that, of the fix, and then we'll throw in something else. Mm. Here's the repair work being done with Tyler on the ladder. See, through the course of the project, I was Simply shooting some B footage. So I'll throw about four seconds of this in here and then I'll finish off with how I finished off. So, I mean, sorry, talking in a circle. It's not like I've done any of this type of uh, tutorial stuff, but I've had so many people ask me, Todd, how are you editing your vlogs in the course of hours? See, we'll see before and after. For whatever reason, this footage is not lining up with my current dimensions. So I'm gonna expand it so it fits in this black bar that's down here. So you fill the whole screen. This did the same. It's probably because of a format issue on my phone. I was using my phone for this footage. But if you don't fix this type of stuff, it's gonna show up in the end and it's just gonna be a project that you're not gonna like. I'll do the outro. And it's me talking. Here's me talking. And we'll throw an RGB split in here again. You can use, what I've learned is, is you really don't want to use um, too many different transitions. You just want to try to keep to two to three per a video. You know? All right. Find out where I start. And voila, we're done. See? See how fast that was? I will probably go back and change this video up a little bit, but it's giving you a good, quick tutorial. I'll split this using the blade tool. Hit A to go back to my, and then I'll pull down on the volume. Tyler, what do you think? <laughs> well, I was done. Three days later, I go work. back to shoot the final. <laughs> it was bad. I'm out. So I'm out. Doing out. And then on that, I'll just do a dissolve transition, move that over, and then I'll ramp down. So now you're, you're like, Todd, well, what do you do for 
like branding. So I'll just come up here and I've actually saved titles. And so I'll just look through some title searches that I have, and these are important. So let's just say I'm gonna choose a, uh, I've got different ones here. Let's just say we'll do this one. I'm just gonna throw it on here for the sake of argument. Go through and wood rot. How to repair. And this other stuff, I'll just delete out. Done. I'll click on this. And then from here, if I don't like where it's at, I'll hit transform tool. I can move it around. The music's playing. attire that Tyler by so there's a story come back RGB split so now you're like th thinking Todd this is awesome what how do you get your color so this is the question I get a lot of questions about if you go over here I have an adjustment layer that I downloaded for Saturday you actually have different types of adjustment layers this was a downloaded adjustment layer that I got a while back all this is is it allows you to do changes to the whole video just not changing every component it's going to change the whole video so what i do is i put an adjustment layer at the top i come over here and i go through my effects tab i use something called um MLUT, and if you do a search for MLUT, you're going to find different packages that you can use i actually downloaded MLUT. i'm using their free package which shocker is actually pretty good so let's go back here to my footage here I click here and we'll come back to MLUT presets and motion VFX again I'll choose dramatic what it's gonna do is it's gonna take my skin tones darken them up a little bit I generally don't like how much it changes my skin tones so what I'll do is I'll come down I'll hit right here I'll hit shadows contrast um, I might bump the contrast up just a little bit by 0.5 I always take my saturation down a little bit okay. and then I have that the differences. Is, that is Eric. <laughs> so now I have great color. It's fairly consistent. It, it isn't completely finished. Eric is going to go inside. He's going to handle all the inside stuff when he in his wood rot business. So motion VFX is where you're going to find your MLUT. Um, if you do a Google, Google search on that and that's how I end up making a quick tutorial on how I do my videos. It's probably not too quick, it's probably like 15 to 18 minutes, but you just saw me shoot a whole vlog, edit it down, and I'll do another video on how I tell a story and how I craft a story around whatever I'm shooting. I just hate a video that is just out there like we're going to the grocery store or something like that. I like videos that are crafted around a story. I think it gives value to the people watching it. You have a beginning, introduction to the players, a problem, and then an outcome. And that's the way if you watch all of my YouTube videos, they're kind of structured that way, whether it's a travel vlog or whether it's fixing something or an adventure or going on a haunted ghost tour or whatever it's going to be, you're going to see these dynamic introduction to the players of the story, um, setting up the story, what the problem is, and the resolution, the outcome. That's how I do my videos. This is how I edit my videos. I hope it was a value to you. And again, Epidemic Sound, I can always go into how I create. I use a product called Canva to create all of my wonderful click-through rates on my thumbnails, which is a whole nother story in itself. But if you look back through my analytics right here, just this year in 2019, I've had 1.6 million impressions. 53% um, came from YouTube recommending my content. If you look at 99,000 impressions, I had a click-through rate of 6.3. I had a click-through rate at one point, now this is over 200 and some videos, but at one point my click-through rate was close to 15%. I created some other stuff, and then my watch time minutes was 311,000 watch time minutes. Again, peek behind the curtain, you can actually see a full encompassing thing here. You'll notice that YouTube search is the one recommending most of my content. So 
That being said, I'm talking forever, but I hope it was a value to you today. And I am...